It's St. Patrick's Day, a day when people all over the world celebrate a man possibly not called Patrick, who possibly wasn't one man, who was most likely Welsh. And since this is an Irish-centric day, I thought I'd look at an Irish-centric topic, one that's been gaining momentum on the internet over the past couple of years. Today we are going to talk about the Irish slavery meme. All these images support the idea that Irish people, particularly in the 17th and 18th centuries, were sent to the Americas as slaves. There are Facebook groups, articles, Twitter posts, all manner of people and places online that are perpetuating this meme. And it seems, especially in the wake of Ferguson and Charleston, that there's been an upshot in the popularity of this meme. 2016's Black History Month saw the most Google searches for Irish slavery ever. And it is often brought up to diminish the experience of African American people. The gist of it usually is, our white ancestors had it really bad, and we don't bother complaining about it, so why do you? It's actually gotten to the point where you can buy merchandising for this thing. You can buy an Irish slavery hoodie. That is a thing you can buy on the internet. I mean, you can also buy this inflatable unicorn horn for your cat, but that doesn't mean you should. And that is clearly a product that even the thing you're buying it for is going to judge you. There are a few books that started appearing around the early 2000s that broached this topic, but the main online source is a 2008 article posted on globalresearch.ca. The article in question is by a man called John Martin, and it is both unsourced and highly inaccurate. I don't want to get too bogged down in this article itself, but I couldn't find any statistics that matched up any of the statistics that actually were quoted in the article. For example, in his article, Martin says there was 1.5 million people living in Ireland in 1641, and a decade later, the population was down to 600,000. Firstly, without getting into the nitty gritty of Irish demography, you can't get an accurate census reading for Ireland before 1841. Secondly, the nearest estimate I could find to that was 850,000 people. 600,000 is an estimate number of people who died during the Confederacy Wars and the Cromwellian Reconquest of Ireland, but that is not an estimate for the entire island's population at any time in this period. Martin also makes a point that 1,300 slaves were at one point drowned by one slave ship's crew because they wanted to have more food for themselves, but no ship of that period could hold that many people. Now, way back in the 17th century, there were many types of unfree persons. There were slaves, there were serfs, there were criminals, there were a myriad of others. We're gonna look at two very specific ones here as relevant to this topic. We're gonna look at indentured servants and chattel slaves. An indentured servant was generally a European who paid for their passage to the New World by agreeing to work for someone for two to seven years. Now, there were indentured servants who were criminals or political prisoners or just poor people who were forcibly transplanted to the new world. And life for these people was not necessarily easy. They could have poor accommodation, they could have poor diets, they could be whipped, they could be fined, they could have their indenture extended. What is important to note is that the indenture itself was the property of the master, not the person. The Irish slavery meme tends to focus a lot on Irish people sent to the Caribbean. And if you were a political prisoner, for example, you could be sent off without any limit on your indenture. However, upon their arrival in Barbados, and this was a legal requirement, they were given a period of service based on their age. During their indenture, there were limits placed on these people. For example, they couldn't engage in commerce, they couldn't own guns, they couldn't command ships, and they couldn't get married. And while many did die from the hardships they endured, indentured servants were not servants for life. When their period of indenture was up, those people were free. At the end of an indenture, a servant would get what was called their freedom dues, which could be property, it could be money, but most importantly what they got was freedom. They became free members of society. Chattel slaves, on the other hand, were livestock. They were listed amongst inventories of cattle. Children of chattel slaves themselves became slaves. Life was brutal, harsh, and there was no chance of freedom. This meme perpetuates the idea that Irish slaves had the worst possible existence, and now while the life of an indentured servant was not easy, the prime punishment for an indentured servant was the extension of their indenture. Yes, they could be whipped for assaulting their master, or they could be fined for a number of other things, but make no odds about it, chattel slaves had it far worse. 
The difference between the two is enshrined in the 1661 Barbados Slave Act, which sought to create a distinction between master, servant, and slave. Following that act, if a servant died, a master could not bury them unless the Justice of the Peace and two neighbors had seen the body. There was no such protection for African slaves. If a slave died, it wasn't a crime. A slave could be killed by anyone, even an Irish servant, for stealing. If an African slave assaulted a Christian, for the first offence they would be whipped, for a second they would be whipped, branded with fire and have their nose slit, and for a third there would be greater corporal punishment. For example, in 1654 a chattel slave stole a pig. That slave was then put in chains for several days, beaten for several days, and eventually had his ear cut off and fed to him. That slave was owned by an Irishman. The idea of the Irish slave meme supports two distinct narratives. One is nationalism, where indentured servitude is added to the mix with English subjugation and conflated with slavery either through ignorance or confusion. The other is that it is supported by racists and white supremacists. The proliferation of the meme has grown since 2014, not surprisingly in the wake of things like Ferguson and Charleston. This melding of ideologies results in a belittling of the African American experience. If you are interested in learning more about this subject, I would definitely suggest checking out the work of Liam Hogan. I have put links in the description. He's a Limerick-based historian who has been doing quite a lot of work on this topic. It's definitely worth reading. Thank you for watching.